I'm here now with Republican Representative Todd Novak, one of the co-sponsors of this redistricting bill. Representative, thanks for being here. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. You've campaigned on the idea of adopting Iowa's model for a long time now, but your bills have not garnered support from your party. But now this does have support. But Democrats say this surprise flip is because of the threat that a liberal-leaning Supreme Court could end up striking down the current maps. Why do you think all of a sudden Republicans are on board now? Well, I actually started, you know, as you alluded to, I've been pushing this since I came in and was elected in 2014. And um, my colleague, Representative Trannell, who is also really into the Iowa model and has supported this. And I started talking about this after the election in last November, after we'd just gone through the court case and stuff. And he says, we got to really try to get this through. We actually met with the speaker in, before or even April and told him, we really think is that, that we have to do this and he agreed he says why don't you guys go talk to the colleagues talk to the democrats see what you guys can come up with and we got it we got there and um i i will tell you i and i get along with my colleagues on the other side of the aisle really well i tried to work with them some of them and so did some of my colleagues that are on were on this uh negotiating thing and it, it just came down to um, they said that um, they they supported it, but their leadership and the governor said they couldn't. Um, one Democrat voted for us. I believe I would have had more support um, in, last night, but I think they were getting pretty much held to the fire not to vote for it. And as you have alluded to here, Governor Tony Evers has come strongly out against this plan and has said, while this is billed as a nonpartisan solution, it would still allow Republicans to have legislative control that there is a backdoor loophole in this legislation. Representative, is this a fast-tracked, bait-and-switch bill aimed at circumventing courts and maintaining Republican control? No, that's just ludicrous, especially anybody that knows me. I don't play that way. And the bill was changed at the request of the Democrats last night to address their concerns. We put on six amendments that all came from Democrats we were working with. And this bill is almost identical exactly to what the governor wanted, stood in the assembly chambers and said he wanted. And I think believe he put it in his budget. So it just is befuddling to me. All of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, we wanted it, but we didn't think you'd going to do it. It took us a lot of time to get my own members on board with this. And granted, Democrats and Republicans are both at fault here. This should have been done years ago when the Democrats are in control, and we should have done it long before now. This, But this bill does not include Supreme Court intervention like it does in Iowa. And then if the legislature rejects the maps twice, the, they can simply pass the third with a simple majority here, which is what Democrats do take issue with. A lot of them are saying two-thirds majority. So, yeah, But what's to stop the party, Republicans, from rejecting the maps, amending the third to fit a partisan agenda with a simple majority? Well, first of all, we changed that. So um, the current version, I believe, does not have that. We also changed the vote to bipartisan. This, the, no maps can go anywhere unless they're bipartisan. We vote until we get there, and the absolute deadline is January 31st. The Legislative Reference Bureau, which is, is the nonpartisan, everybody trusts them, took the Iowa model and uh, formed it to our Constitution. In the Iowa Constitution, it says Supreme Court. Ours does not. And so they said we couldn't put Supreme Court in there. It's our Supreme Court or our uh, Constitution specifically says legislator, the legislation, legislator, you know, this legislature shall will redistrict when in the governor of course has to sign up. Representative, yes. let me interrupt you there. I have spoken with a political expert who says that the legislature, yes, it says that in there, but his interpretation of this is that the legislature could delegate. To, and he does not believe a constitutional amendment would be necessary to get a Supreme Court involved here. Uh, honestly, where do you think this is going to end up? Because we don't say Supreme Court. If there's a problem, you know as well as I do, past history will end up on the Supreme Court. I, why do we need to specifically spell Supreme Court in? And why were they okay with the other, the Democrats okay not having Supreme Court in the other bill? I mean, so this is not a new bill. This is the one that's been put out for 10 years they all support. Now all of a sudden they're having all these concerns. Um, if we to put this out before with the last Supreme Court, before the last Supreme Court, 
and had Supreme Court in there, they'd be complaining. See, you just want to go to your Supreme Court to draw the map. So you can kind of see the irony here. Granted, yeah. the optics of this probably don't look good, but like I said, I don't play that way. Well, let's go back to the bipartisan amendment that passed on mm -hmm. Thursday night then. So how, how many Democrats would be in a bipartisan vote? Is that something Democrats have said they take issue? What constitutes bipartisan? at that well, point and if the legislature is Republican controlled. Yeah, sorry to me. Um, you need to remember, there could be Republicans that say, five or six of them that say, I don't I don't like the way they drew my district. I'm not voting for this. And there could be some Democrats. So you could essentially end up with a combination of Democrats and Republicans making them, you know, the bipartisan vote. I, I, for, I can foresee that. Um, because I know how it works. I mean, you're going to have maps that Republic, some Republicans aren't going to like, some Democrats aren't going to like. So the idea is to get everybody on board. And the ultimate say is the governor anyway. He gets to weigh in. we got to negotiate with him. Um, and, um, and, and I have, you know, we negotiate shared revenue with him. It can be done. It will be done. And I, I just would say this is one of the highlights of my career. Representative Todd Novak, thanks so much for the time.